sparked the conversations on bodies, sex, and intimacy. And with that, without further ado, I want to introduce to you the speakers for this event. Jonathan Zenti from Spreaker. Alexander Charles Adams from Dream Boy. Smash Cut, The Pulse, Love Me. Christina Loring from Cooking by Air. And Mitra Kaboli from ESPN's 30 for 30 podcast. Please give me a round of applause as we welcome these speakers. Hello. Hello. How's the coffee down there? Okay. Uh, welcome to everyone. This is the first of five live stage hosted by Boxnest. And this one is about how we work on audio when we have to talk about our body and intimacy and sexuality. And I'm very happy to uh, have on stage these beautiful guests. So, Mitra Kaboli, uh, one of the original members of The Heart, uh, and currently working for ESPN 3430 Documentaries. Christina Loring, um, working for Deep Sea, as I, re I remember, I forgot your title, sorry. Uh, lead editor, right? And Alexander Charles Adams, independent producer, uh, creator of Smash Cut podcast, and uh, of many other uh, beautiful things. Uh, so we're going to start talking a little bit about um, the fact that we're going to listen to some explicit content. Uh, so um, if anyone of you, 15, um, <laughs> uh, is um, uh, concerned about some kind of topic, be aware that we're going to listen to some um, cool stuff, in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Good, Do good. we have everyone's good, 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 consent good. here? Okay, cool. So I'm going to start with Mitra. Uh, and I wanted to ask you what we are going to listen to. Um, so the, what we're about to listen to is actually, um, a, it's a series of pieces that I put together. I think there was three or four of them that were spread across uh, like four episodes of The Heart. Um, at the very beginning, and it's about um, a rogue hair on my chin. Okay, can we play it? Yeah, pl okay. you have my consent. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> on a day like any other in my late 20s, I woke up and I do what I always do. I drink a glass of water, poop, shower, brush my teeth. Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? A thick black hair, about a centimeter long, had grown out the tip of my chin, as if overnight. How long had it been there? How had I not noticed? To be fair, most of my hair is thick and black, like everywhere. My whole life, I've been watching every woman in my family meticulously groom. I remember a wedding a few years ago. My aunt, my grandmother, my mom, and my cousin, all sitting at different corners of a hotel bed with magnified hand mirrors, plucking every stray and out of place hair off of their face. But on that particularly harrowing morning, worrying that if I plucked it, three more would grow in its place, I decided to let it be. As the day went on when I was bored, my hands would wander to my face, and I would feel it out, running it through my thumb and my forefinger, trying to figure out its exact length and diameter. How can something so small take up so much space?
A week has passed since I first noticed my chin hair, and I'm frozen with indecision. This single hair is carrying a quarter century of guilt and shame about my body. To pluck it would mean to give in to myself and the hair-free obsession of the patriarchy. Keeping it felt like a shameful secret. I woke up that following Monday and do what I always do. Drink a glass of water, poop, shower, brush my teeth, put on my tinted moisturizer. Then, without a second thought, like a surge of my foremother's blood pulsing through my veins, I picked up the tweezers and I plucked it out. I examined it for a moment and then I blew it away. I've been telling you little stories about what is the biggest conflict I have about my body. I'm obsessed with my body hair. Over the years, I've experimented with how far I can push my comfort levels. Most recently, growing out my armpit hair. I like it, but not all of the time. Sometimes I get embarrassed. Sometimes I catch people glancing at it, maybe because it's too dark, too unruly, or just because it's there at all. I've had employers say, I don't really care or anything, but like for the customers. Or students of mine ask why on earth I would do this. Over the winters when my body is cloaked behind layers of clothes, I convince myself that I've made peace with it. Then as the snow thaws, again, I'm faced with myself, my true self. The self that was picked on as a kid or mistaken for a boy. The self that remembers okay, the girl in the seventh so grade. Okay, so let's follow the instruction. Sorry for that. Saying, right? What's happening? Yeah, like you have to leave the... Should we go? Everybody is living in the building. We, we should go, right? Yeah. Okay. See you later. Sorry for that. And let's follow the instruction.
Welcome back from your adventure outside. How was the, how was the, oh my goodness, I said it too soon. Hello, Gil. We'll go up at, at 1040. I think so. Cool. How was it outside, Tim? Hot. Let him conclude and then Perfect. just shorten up the break for in here. Perfect. Because cool. the next one is again me. It, it's oh, there. Right so awesome. we'll just keep this rolling. We've got other big fish to fry in okay. our breakout. Because those are attacking. Cool. Cool. All right. Y'all uh, can walk up. My fellow podcasters, welcome back inside. If you were on the live stage listening to the sound of skin and body, we are going to be resuming that with a wonderful panelist and getting people back on stage. So if you're checking that out, or you want to check it out, please walk back to our wonderful Vox Nest live stage at Podcast Movement 2019. Woohoo! Welcome back. Yes, welcome back. Hello, welcome back. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Hey, Jonathan. All right, I will let you take this over and just let me know whenever. Hello, 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 hello. Um, I'm going to... Thank you to everybody who came back. Thank you. It's very appreciated. Yeah. Mitra, your piece set the building on fire. <laughs> uh, it was so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit how it, it was going to end? The, um, audio clip? the truth is I don't remember how it ends. Uh, but I think we had already, it was like basically the end. I think it ended with my feelings about like trying to reconcile um, grooming hair versus not and what those two things are kind of um, what they mean culturally. And I think it's left amp, like, uh, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I think that's how it ends. <laughs> and how did you decide to talk about that thing and 
what kind of decisions did you yeah. take along the process? So, you know, it, you're making the heart after many years. Um, I slowly got more comfortable kind of like putting myself out there. And I feel like talking about body hair was like kind of like the last bastion of my comfort zone, honestly. Um, and, you know, I, I just like since I was a little kid, you know, I like grew up around lots of like blonde white people and I was just like I look really different than you and this is weird and it was brought to my attention a lot when I was little like a lot so um you know I'm just like carrying that with me my whole life but we were doing this body series and I like you know was helping all these people produce these stories and I kind of wanted to string them all together somehow so I decided to make little introductions um for each episode that kind of like brought a little bit of me to each story and then I just kind of like you know set it up set up each story with a little bit of something personal um so like we're, everyone's sharing um <laughs> yeah um and that's kind of how I made that decision and it was actually really fun and pretty cathartic um and I really enjoyed like sound designing it it was really really fun for me actually okay thank you um, so, Alexander. Hi, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit what you're going to listen to, if you remember? Yeah, <laughs> so this is the opening scene from uh, the last large documentary I made, which was about the closure of the last backroom bars in New Orleans. Speaking explicitly, a backroom is a part of a bar where gay men can have anonymous sex in the dark. And we don't think of these things as super like, important cultural touchstones, but for queer people, especially queer people in the South, it's super important. And so uh, the opening five minutes of this is a immersive drop into that world. Okay, I'm gonna listen to it. I reach the doors and yank. The bar is packed, wall-to-wall -wall queers with piercings, jock straps, leather bands, hankies, and beards. Thick, hot beards just everywhere. It makes me melt. Excuse me. Excuse me, sorry. Sorry. Old nudie magazines and Tom of Finland posters cover the walls. Oddly enough, sharing space with mounted moose. <laughs> 70s Leatherman porn prints and blue light leaking from the slot machines on the back wall. And these low hanging lights with that specialty bulb luminescent bullshit, but it's just so right. So sorry, so sorry, okay. Hi, uh, what can I do you for? Uh, double tequila and ginger beer. He reaches over to get something out of the ice chest and his ass peeks out over his pants. Groovy, thanks. I do about half. Those four over there, specifically. That last one looks like he could fucking break me. All right, cigarette, and then I'll go up. Wait, they're going up. Fuck. Okay, well, just gotta try it. I start sucking on that straw like nothing I ever have and just down that shit. And then I wait for them to go up so it's not weird. Great, now I beeline across the bar. Excuse me. Mm, sorry. I get to the door frame in the back. Beyond it, a rickety, steep staircase. The staircase. The walls look like a leather porn zine and a rule book threw up all over the place. Intricate cutouts of the most stereotypical men you could think of interspersed with no phones, more hunks and white people, and then big white on red letters, no photography. Fuck, I get hard and nervous as shit all at the same time right before you can see into the darkness. One last sign. One drink minimum. And then you're in the darkness. Thick and wet. Red. Dim. Except for a bright screen. Guy after guy loading up this bottom. Speakers at full blast, cutting in between the thumpa thumpa of the dance floor below. It all makes it so hard to see anything. I 
cling to the bar to give my eyes some time to adjust, just to be sure and deal with. What can I get for you, dear? Oh, nice eye make. Thanks. So, what can I get you? Uh, tequila and ginger beer. Single. Finally, my eyes start to clear up. Dark blobs become people, huddled together in the corners, pressed against walls, bent over speakers on all fours. Oh, fuck that. The bartender hands me my drink and goes back to chatting with some friends in the corner. <clears throat> I go to spin back round to face the sea of fuck and then he catches me. This flash of piercing green eyes and furry belly stops me. He's sitting next to me. I look him up and down and just swallow him. Wait, he... He's talking to me. Um, I... <laughs> I can't make anything out. And then he stops talking. He looks down. I follow his eyes, uh, and then I make uh, out something... Huge. Woof. He nods and swivels again on his stool. And I see it. I... I want it. I slide down and I reach out, mouth wide, and I take his big, hard. But that's not what this place is. It's what this place was. And fuck, I miss it. What you heard before was a memory from nights I've had between these walls. Now, nothing feels the same. My phone is in my hand. That cute bear from before is now on my screen. Since the lights are on, it's grinder or bust up here now. I message him back some pics. I turn to see that the TV doesn't play porn anymore. It's some exercise video with boys in jock straps. Ugh, yeah. This place was real. Like, Real, real. And now it's this. How did this happen? And who turned on these motherfucking lights? Okay, so thank you, it's beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> and one thing that I really like about this piece is when it changes from what it was to what it is, there's like kind of in, um, like very quick, uh, it's like a curtain fall, uh, falling Yeah, it drops down. away. Yeah. Um, so how did you work on that? How did you recreate something that it's not there anymore? And Yeah, so um, with the nature of a back room, like, it is unethical to try and record in that space, right? So I was working entirely off of memory in order to rebuild what upstairs was. And the greatest measure I had of if I was getting it right was literally if I listened back to it with people and found myself smiling, which also happened in listening to it just now. Like, it's awkward and tense and weird and sexy, but like, it's, it makes me so happy when I hear it. And then that curtain falls away and my smile is immediately wiped off my face. I hear the sound in between the, the fullness of that dark room and then what it is now and the the transition between them was really based on that idea of wiping off joy from my face um other things I wiped off of my face but <laughs> it's <laughs> um the the big thing was trying to find the difference between you know joy and like regret or lacking you know did you already have uh, any reaction from audience listening to it? Yeah, so like only one journalist in New Orleans covered this story and it's um, <laughs> it's really interesting because queer people in New Orleans thought that these two bars were closed because of the state or police or something like that, the government, right? Um, and straight people hating on gays. That is not what happened. It was a fellow gay Republican person that caused the two bars to close. And um, it was really important to me that this story get told. But at the same time, not everybody's from New Orleans. Not everybody cares. So it was really important to me that this opening gets you to care, really love that space, as weird as it is, and feel that 
drop. And no, that wasn't right, and I want to know why this happened. And so the rest of the story is reporting on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Christina, uh, can you tell uh, us a little bit about DeepSea, what it is, what you do there, and what you're going to listen to? Hello. Uh, I work at Dipsy. We're an audio erotica app. It's a feminist audio erotica app. We are making immersive, sexy stories that are designed to turn you on. And it's also a way for a lot of our listeners to get in touch with their body, uh, to reconnect with their sensual self, to connect with their partner. Um, it might be a tool for a conversation they want to have with their partner about some sexual things they want to explore. And it's also, you know, to turn you on um, and masturbate to. Uh, so the clip that I am playing today is, we do a lot of our stories kind of sound like Mitra's and Alexander's in terms of first person storytelling. You have the interior world uh, and a recounting of an experience. But the clip that I'm playing today is a little different. We're eavesdropping on a couple. It's from a series where we're following a couple on a road trip for the Southwest United States. And each episode is a stop on their trip. So I really like this piece because there's a moment, well, I guess I can talk about it after, but there's a moment where we're seeing how consent is sexy and negotiation is used as foreplay. And I don't think we see that a lot uh, in erotica. And so I'm excited to share this with you. And I just want to give a little warning. I know you all showed up at 10 a.m. for a sex and body panel, so I know you're down. But there's a few moments I cut out some very explicit uh, sex sounds, but I'm giving you some taste of that. Uh, so you're going to hear the audio fade, and then we'll have a little taste of the more explicit sex. So if that makes you uncomfortable, you should cover your ears. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't win. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> no, you didn't. Well, if you want to do a rematch, I'll beat you again. I clearly hit the wall before you did. I turned my what? head out of the water and I saw you touch. What? You think you're an objective referee? <laughs> Fine. We'll do a rematch tomorrow, but we're going to do it before the afternoon rosé this time. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, these lounge chairs are actually comfortable. Come feel. <laughs> I think it's called a day bed, baby. Oh, la la. Then come sit on my day bed. Wow, it's so hot out. I love it. Yeah, that's because you're a reptile. You want some bubbles? Nah, I'm sun drunk. Ooh, camping was okay, but this? <sighs> a nice pool, a luxury hotel. I'm so glad we did it in this order. I told you Vegas would be worth the stop. You gotta indulge sometimes. Looking at you walking around in a bikini by the pool all day? <laughs> Hmm. Of course you're trying to snuggle in the seat. <laughs> Don't fake protest. <laughs> Maybe you got a little lipstick on you. <laughs> Get it. Okay, you're good. You just want an excuse to touch my mouth. <laughs> Do I need an excuse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? This view is pretty sweet. You can see that mural on the side of the building that we saw earlier. The woman making out with the robot. See, right there? Ugh, it's so cool. Yeah, who knew Vegas was popping with the street art? This room's amazing, too. It's almost secluded. I mean, I guess you could see that row of rooms over there, but it's almost like it's just us. Your girl did good, huh? <laughs> so good. <laughs> babe, babe, wait. Okay, don't look. On the penthouse balcony across, is that the lady from the pool? <laughs> I said, don't look. Oh my God, with the big earrings on? Yeah, she's hot. Wait, is she looking at us? <laughs> I think she's pretending not to, just like we're pretending not to. It's, it's hard to tell with those dark shades on. Um, I mean, maybe her curtains open on accident. She can't be looking at us. Um, do you think her robe opening is an accident? Oh my God, Corey. I can see her entire right to it. Oh, wow. She's- I know, don't make me jealous. That robe is so sexy. <laughs> You're looking at the robe? Look at her tits. She's 100% looking right at us. Holy shit. I, th I think that was a wave. She waved at us. Oh my God, that's so awkward. She's totally been watching I'm gonna us. wave back. No, die. I know, I'm gonna. Die, die. What? She clearly likes it. Oh, and cupping her tit. Oh, wow. 
she, her, she's putting her hand down there. <laughs> Ty, she's touching herself. Oh, you're so cute and awkward. But I think she wants us to play along. That's crazy. Mm, I don't think that's crazy. I think it's sexy. Well, I guess we're only here for one night, so who cares? Take these off. Oh, babe, you already wet for mm, me? You know I love this oh. view of you. Mm, baby, it's been a while. I want to go down at you. Oh. Oh. Oh, fuck, I love seeing your ass shimmy down like that. Mm, yes. Yeah. Let me use my hands to do it. Let me use my hands. Oh. 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 Mm. You like that? Oh, grab my hips, grab my hips. Let me ride you. Mm. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Mm. Don't move. Mm. You like that? Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, she just cheers us. <laughs> cheers to you. <laughs> Die. What? Now you're being shy? <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. It was really great. And it's always a good, such a good experience to listen to these things all together. And... Um, can you tell us a little bit how you work on the stories and how you work with the actors and the scripts? And um, we work, well, we have a team, it's a very small two-person and me team of writers, and then we work with a lot of freelance writers to make sure that we're getting a diversity of identity, experience, uh, style, um, and so we get all kinds of pitches about all sorts of uh, sexual experience, but Dipsy is definitely sort of elevated realism, elevated fantasy in some way. So it might not happen to you, it could happen to you, but it probably won't happen to you. And so in this case, it's demonstrating a couple that is so comfortable with themselves without being like, we're in an aspirationally monogamous relationship and we're down to explore. You're witnessing them trusting each other and being open and inviting a third person, even if it's in a voyeuristic or exhibitionist way, into their relationship. So, um, yeah, so we do a lot of, like, we're doing a lot of thoughtful care to make sure that everything is safe and sexy. Uh, and that we're sort of showcasing tension and sort of like that core desire um, through each story. And in terms of uh, sound design, it's kind of hard to hear in this room, but there's a lot of small moments. We want to make sure the sex isn't um, what we're, you might be used to hearing in porn, and it's less like outward screaming, over-exaggerated performance, and what I like to call inward pleasure, sort of like inward facing moans, and um, more subdued sounds to really show the restraint and also urgency, and then people who are like really present in their body and, and with their partner. And do you think yeah. that, do, do you picture yourself, mm, the listeners, the way they listen to this stuff and do you think that that thing plays a role yeah. in, in your sound design? Totally. I think that, I mean, there's a lot of studies done that talk specifically about women needing more um, context and mood setting in erotica and I think that can go for a lot of people regardless of gender. Um, but I feel like we're, we're constantly thinking about psychological safety. We're also thinking of making things relatable moments but not too specific so that that people can tap in and fill in their imagination um, where they see fit. Um, so I definitely, in this piece, like I definitely imagine people turning themselves on, listening to this piece, but it's also, a nice, it could be a nice couple listening experience too, where you see a couple feel so much trust between each other that they're willing to explore something that they've never done before. Okay, thank you to all of you. We are wrapping it up because we, we are a bit late with our schedule. Uh, because of the fire uh, that didn't happen. Uh, but if you want to make some question to 
to them, to us. We, we can be around here for a few minutes. Thank you to everybody. See you after a short break with another panel about um, a great investigation that um, put some spotlights on the fact that McDonald's don't, doesn't serve pizza anymore. Uh, see you later. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Woo! You. Please give a round of Thank applause you. for a wonderful panelist. Thank you. Thank you. And going through that storm, that was that drill. We'll be back in two, three minutes. Please hold on. We will have Jonathan back on the stage. Thank you.